Tibet, the roof of our world. Words do no justice to the untouched beauty of this far corner of Earth. A vast, mysterious, and sacred place, embraced and protected by miles of immovable mountains. Monasteries, built many hundreds, sometimes thousands of years ago, stand in defiance of the elements, precariously placed among the clouds. Many of these very ancient structures are said to have been built on the remnants of once even grander ancient buildings, structures many religions attribute to the gods. Among the seemingly endless mountain ranges lay one mountain which is different, one which is special. It is believed by most of Tibet, and even further afield, that the god Shiva lay buried within this sacred mountain. According to ancient beliefs, this enigmatic Tibetan mountain represents the axis of the world, the stairway to heaven. In many eastern countries, Mount Kailash is considered the holiest place on earth. Some ancient sources even suggesting it is where one could find the mysterious city of the gods. It is indeed regarded within the climbing world as unascendable. A route has never been located and probably never will. Few have been brave enough to even go near this place in the past century. There may be some profound reasoning behind these ancient clusters of human beings, regarding this particular mountain over all others as sacred and as the resting place of a god. There may, however, be ulterior motives at play when it comes to the discouragement of climbers in attempting the peak. A team of Russian scientists, intrigued by the history and a possible suppression of its true nature, have suggested after covert explorations that the top of Mount Kailash is not a natural formation. It is actually the remnants of a giant man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Just how old this pyramid could be currently remains unclear. What also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid, disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone." End quote. A mysterious claim put forward in regards to the mountain concerns rapid aging when in the area. After spending 12 hours in the region, the length of nails and hair was equal to two weeks of normal growth in some cases. Several mystics have said that the mountain has a secret entrance within it, leading to the legendary kingdom of Shambhala. Legend also states that when the ice on its peak finally melts, it will reveal the eye. Professor Ernst Muldashev, PhD, a doctor and explorer who traveled to Tibet extensively, said later in his life, quote, There are two underground countries, the Shambhala and Agartha which are each part of the gene pool of humanity and civilization. Information provided by the Thule Society shows there is a higher civilization coming from the Himalayas and divided into two branches, the Shambhala and Agartha, the former being the center of power protected by unknown forces and energy." End quote. An understanding of what sort of pyramid Kailash could be, or indeed just how special it is, may take several years to establish. I will, of course, keep you posted. Fort Ransom is a small place within the state of North Dakota, USA, that may hold an enormous yet quietly held secret. In this small slice of the rural farming lands of the United States lies a place known as Pyramid Hill, a small, modest pyramidal mound which is very similar in shape and size to the curious pyramidal mound found in other parts of the world, such as Silbury Hill, a chalk pyramid within the UK. Long argued by a number of funded geologists as a mere natural formation, however, local residents, along with historical accounts within the area, have strongly disagreed with these conclusions, since their predictable acceptance by the academic community. A vast portion of the surrounding population believe, including a number of specialist historians and archaeologists, that Pyramid Hill is in fact that of a man-made pyramid, 
what's more, they hold to the belief that it is the oldest pyramidal structure on Earth. What makes this site the most interesting, we feel, however, and the reason for this video, is the writing stone which was found nearby some centuries ago. Clearly very ancient cup and ring marks, and constructed to form some kind of communication. They have, however, remained undeciphered. They are incredibly intriguing, and are reminiscent of a hybrid between music and Morse code. Yet all attempts to establish a translation of the pattern have been unsuccessful. Located in the Cheyenne River Valley, in southeastern North Dakota, pitted mysteriously cup and ring marked boulders appear in Saskatchewan, South Dakota, Iowa, and many other sites all over the world. Just who created them remains a mystery. Was the writing stone left by the original builders of Pyramid Hill? If so, why is it an unknown language? Who wrote it? Is Pyramid Hill really the oldest pyramid on Earth? Built by an unknown culture who clearly spoke and wrote a highly complex and as yet undecipherable language? Perhaps one day we will find out the truth. We recently covered the so-called Inca Road an ancient stone pathway that stretches an astonishing 25,000 miles across Peru, Chile, and far beyond. Linking countless ancient, as yet unexplained ruins, this enormous ancient road was carved straight through solid cliff faces, along near vertical rock faces, and is an astonishing example of ancient architecture. Although currently claimed as being Incan, and, conveniently, often overlooked by mainstream academic study, along with the sites it connects, it is clearly an example of building capability far out of the reach of Incan civilization. The Huaca del Sul, an adobe brick temple, that, regardless of the clear feat of its construction, along with the currently recognized number of builders involved, is, regardless of these facts, still stubbornly claimed as having been built by the so-called Mochi civilization between 100 CE to 800 CE. Located upon the northern coast of Peru, the temple is one of several ruins found near the volcanic peak of Cerro Blanco. The other major ruin at the site is the nearby Huaca de la Luna, a better preserved but smaller temple. According to academic opinion, by 450 CE, eight different stages of construction had been completed on the Huaca del Sul. The technique was additive. New layers of bricks were laid directly on top of the old, hence large quantities of bricks were required for the construction. Archaeologists have estimated that the Huaca del Sul was composed of over 130 million adobe bricks and was the largest pre-Columbian adobe structure built in the Americas. The number of different maker's marks on the bricks suggests that over a hundred different communities contributed to the construction of the Huacas. Yet, regardless of the clearly astonishing ancient feat that this structure was, largely attributed to be the remains of an ancient pyramid, the facts surrounding the past true purpose of this structure is merely ignored in favor of an attribution to a more modern ancestor. For if it is indeed noted as being that of an ancient pyramid, like many alternative, independent, and often nicknamed fringe researchers have, it would open the door to some controversial questions. One in particular being why would a civilization located at the claimed time within history build pyramids? Just like those upon the African continent, namely upon the Giza Plateau. Why would a culture that had supposedly never met ancient Egyptians, just like those ruins found all over Guatemala, and indeed South America, have built these enigmatic structures purely by coincidence? It seems that the evidence has mounted over the years in opposition to such opinion, and these ancient ruins are simply improbable to have merely come about by chance or coincidence, and were indeed once built with full intentions that are now lost to the eons. Who built the Huaca del Sul? Why did they build it? It is undoubtedly an astonishing ancient ruin, 
one which we find highly compelling. In 1917, an amazing find was made in Indonesia. Entered into the report of the Department of Antiquities, the Dutch historian N. J. Chrome also mentioned it in 1949. Employees of the National Archaeology Research Center visited the site in 1979 for a study of its archaeology, history, and geology. If the claims are proven accurate, Indonesia possesses the oldest pyramidic structure on the face of the earth. Buried under a mound of ancient sediment. Located around 800 meters above sea level, the site covers a hill in a series of terraces bordered by retaining walls of stone, and is covered with massive rectangular stones of volcanic origin. The Sundanese people considered the site sacred, believing it was the result of the legend of King Silawangi's attempts to build a palace in one night. Based on various dating techniques, the site has an official dating for completion by 5000 BC and quite likely much earlier. This pyramid is very old indeed. Interestingly the Lake and Mountain in Borneo or rather, what the natives and tourists alike have known as a mountain for millennia, has also recently been confirmed to actually be an ancient pyramid. Drill samples from the tops of these mounds have provided carbon dates going as far back as 20,000 BC, the deeper they drilled the older the carbon dates became, peaking out at a layer of not local basalt at 90 feet. In West Java ancient knowledge had successfully been retained, indigenous communities claimed Egyptians landed, and even colonized Indonesia well before 2000 BC. The evidence for the colonization of Indonesia by the ancient Egyptians, is documented by Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, in his volume, The History of Javam, 1830. Tomb paintings and writings show that the Egyptians were trading down the Red Sea and into the Indian Ocean. Were these structures actually created by Egyptians? Why were they placed where they lay? As I have mentioned before we know an awful lot about the Egyptian civilization, a lot of our knowledge from what they left us in written language, scrawled and hieroglyph all over these ancient monuments, we know about mummification processes in detail, we know all about their religious rituals, death practices etc, yet, alas, not one shred of writing on how they constructed such or inspiring tombs, or why make them in the shape of a pyramid, out of millions of tons of accurately placed stone. Did the Egyptians just claim these structures as their own, as an illusionary appearance of power? A drought killed the ancient Egyptians, yet their supposed sphinxes show evidence of submersion, and thousands of years of heavy rainfall, this points a logical finger at an earlier creation date. With modern technologies, testing equipment, penetrating radar, and the internet, it appears the truth of who we really are, and who our ancestors were, may be revealed to us all. In 1914, archaeologists found an astonishing location in Ganung Padang, in Indonesia. Two ancient stone mountains rest in this region, mountains in the form of pyramids, their size is truly massive. Intrigued by their shape, this 1914 team initiated a series of test digs in the small likelihood that they were man-made. The proposition of these two huge land features actually being pyramids, must have been virtually unthinkable to these initial explorers, their subsequent excavation also concluded that the site was indeed a natural formation. However, fast forward 100 years of technological advances in archaeology, photography, ground penetrating radar and satellite imaging, and we can now take much deeper looks at locations, gaining far greater insight than was possible a century ago. The archaeological societies are currently in a panic, in regards to an expedition which is being undertaken to this very site. Over 100 years after its initial discovery and disregardment. What is interesting to note, a detail this team must be aware of, a detail largely suppressed and rarely discussed, is the fact that very ancient monuments rest upon the tops of each mountain, monuments that were later dated at 2500 years old. And confirmed as artificial megalithic structures. The reason the archaeological community is worrying, is due to their possible size. They would dwarf the Great Pyramids of Giza. However, the pyramids, in Giza are in a very special location, they in fact rest on the center of the world's land mass, the question would be, why would Indonesia possess such ginormous pyramids? In 2010, geologist Dr. Daninata Wijaja, who earned a doctorate at Caltech, recognized the mountains as possible man-made pyramids, and began to explore using ground-penetrating radar, seismic tomography, resistivity survey and other remote sensing techniques, as well as some direct excavations and deep core drilling. The results were immediately intriguing, 
producing evidence of deeply buried man-made chambers and yielding carbon dates going back as far as 26,000 years. This would make the construction prior to the last ice age. Such ideas are heresy to mainstream archaeologists. The archaeological establishment in Indonesia banded together against Dr. Natal Wijaja and his team, lobbied the political authorities, agitated locally and succeeded in slowing down, though not completely stopping, the further exploration of Ganung Padang. However Dr. Natal Wijaja fought back, doing some high-level lobbying of his own, taking the matter to the president of Indonesia himself. There were further delays to do with elections in Indonesia but just a couple of months ago, the final obstacles were lifted and Dr. Natal Wijaga and his team moved back on to the Ganung Padang site with full approval to go ahead with their work, including permission to excavate the concealed chambers. Although it may not be widely received, this excavation may be the most important currently being undertaken on Earth. Mainstream archaeologists are furious, and have been lobbying to get the work stopped, fortunately to no avail. Preliminary excavations have produced results that prove beyond doubt that Ganung Padang is indeed a man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Even the relatively young layer so far excavated, the second artificial columnar rock layer beneath the megalithic site visible on the surface, has yielded dates of 5200 BC, nearly 3000 years older than the orthodox dating for the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. They are also firm indications from the original remote sensing and core drilling work that there is much older layers below. In short, it is now evident to all that the site is vastly older than the 2,500 years archaeologists had insisted upon for decades. Even the most hostile are now quietly reframing their assessment of the site and referring to it as a gigantic terrace tomb, which was part of the biggest megalithic culture in the archipelago. I will keep you posted.